Have you noticed just how much of big TV these days is driven by plot twists? And yet how rare it is anymore to be truly surprised by any of its supposedly big reveals? Like how nobody was surprised that McPoyle from It's Always Sunny here was also the vest guy from Apollo 13? And how John died and then we all knew immediately he was coming back again from the dead? And then after that, Danny went full Mad Queen and Apocalypse Now King's Landing. These were supposed to be huge reveals designed to break the internet, and yet we all saw them coming a mile away. As modern prophet Troy Barnes once explained via a mixtape, this is quote, because the internet, aka directly caused by the activity of each of these shows' online fan communities on Reddit and Twitter. In each of these examples, KG Reddit fans picked up on narrative clues and published their findings online far before the showrunners of Westworld and Game of Thrones meant to reveal them, which naturally took some of the bite out of their intended big moments. Dan Harmon, part-time Community and Rick and Morty creator and full-time IRL Slavo Zizek impersonator, once made the terrifyingly accurate claim that Reddit has essentially become a giant render farm for our favorite franchises. Basically, his point was that there is so much raw processing bandwidth by so many brains talking about a TV show for so long on these websites that eventually, every possible permutation of every conceivable plotline of a TV show will be discussed online prior to air. In other words, nowadays it's basically impossible for a creator to come up with a twist that completely satisfies the internet and taking everybody by surprise. Harmon's point was actually meant to be empowering to writers, to remind them, forget worrying about crazy plot twists, they are always going to disappoint audiences with large active fan bases. So just focus on nailing the authenticity of a scene rather than trying to outsmart the combined processing power of the entire internet. Which I think is an insightful, accurate, and helpful perspective for writers to adopt in the current environment. Here's the thing though. There is a beautiful, strange, coffee-guzzling man named David Lynch. Because this one man is so unique, so crazy town banana pants. Talk to me about crazy town banana pants. Look, we're because he is his own special little flavor of ice cream. 2017's Twin Peaks The Return was in fact the only show in recent memory that the entire internet could not for the life of them predict where the f this was going. This is pretty ironic since David Lynch is also the guy who's personally responsible for pretty much every element of the prestige TV landscape as we currently see it. For example, how about the fact that pretty much every primetime TV show these days uses some form of a puzzle box plot structure where the ostensible point of tuning in every single week is to figure out what is quote, actually going on. Twin Peaks Round 1 invented that idea on TV and made it a ratings powerhouse. Before that, basically your only two options to rating success on television was a choice between big yucks or bigger hair. Or what about the fact that Twin Peaks very directly and very explicitly influenced three very specific TV shows that immediately followed it? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Sopranos, and The X-Files. And that almost every TV showrunner working today had their start in the writer's room of one of those three shows. Apparently Hollywood works a lot like the Royal Houses of Westeros and that there appears to be only three houses that really matter to everything, and their entire history is informed by the choices of one old man with white hair and a taste for uncomfortable furniture who's obsessed with coffee, which I hope we can all agree is simply your Colin's version of wildfire. Or what about the idea of freaking internet commentary itself? Yup. Yep. Twin Peaks was the first show that was crazy enough to spawn a small but devoted fan base obsessed with sharing their theories with total strangers using a newfangled contraption called the Usenet, which was the first internet community and precursor to other internet forums and fan sites. Prior to Twin Peaks, the internet was reserved exclusively for A, defense contractors, and B, adorably quaint 90s thriller premises. All of that to say, I think there is something just a little bit magic. In that, right when it appeared that our 21st century jaded TV viewership had lost all hope of ever being caught by surprise by a plot twist in a prestige television show ever again, 
that during the summer of 2017, there was one last time when you were able to tune into Twitter during a series of Sunday nights and watch the collective internet just get their minds blown in real time over whatever just happened on the most recent episode of Twin Peaks The Return. I'm not sure it's something we're ever going to experience again. Which is not to say that there are not other cool things out there on the horizon. I, for one, can't wait to see how Disney Plus plans to blur the lines even further between cinema world and TV land with its high-budget, in-continuity MCU limited episode TV shows, for example. You know, whenever the new launch dates are released from content jail by the Voldemort-like virus that shall not be named. But when I look at most of Hollywood's announcements that are worth getting excited about right now, they all kind of look like what Disney Plus is doing. And by that I mean they're carefully laid franchise plans by giant international corporations. And let's be honest, none of those are as strange and surprising and bespoke as Twin Peaks The Return, traditional TV's last surprise.